Listen, I regularly patrol the Mexican and Canadian borders, and I could do an hour or two of interview with you and just tell you the stories I pick up along the border that are confirmed by law enforcement and security. Go ahead. Give us uh, give us some information. Okay. First, I'll give you a very personal first-hand account. I was returning a rent-a-car at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, and I gave the keys to the young gentleman, a very handsome, very friendly guy. He was a an Indonesian, a Muslim from Indonesia. And I was run, rushing to catch my flight, and for no reason, he yells out, America is the greatest country on earth. And I said, yeah, I know America is the greatest country on earth. Why do you think America is the greatest country on earth? He says, well, you see, I used to be like a FedEx UPS uh, delivery boy in Jakarta, capital of Indonesia. And once I was in the American embassy uh, delivering packages, and an American embassy official points his finger at me and says, hey, you, you want to go to America? There's a plane leaving tomorrow. Bring your family, bring your brothers and sisters and cousins and uncles and aunts, bring your friends. It's paid for already. He says, but I don't have a passport. I don't have a visa. He says, doesn't matter. We will process you in the United States when you arrive. Isn't America the greatest country on earth? And I have received emails, which I've checked out and they're true. There is a pilot quit a charter company, air charter company. He was flying Muslims illegally into the country every day with U.S. official permission, of course. Muslims are being brought in in the thousands. And uh, eventually it's a lot more than thousands. You know, when you it's cumulative. Muslims are popping up everywhere all over the United States. They're being distributed to these sanctuary cities. Right. But you just said something key in there, and that is the government goes along with this. Right. Th- therefore, Americans feel helpless. I'm, I'm even going to say they even feel hopeless because and then these folks have <laughs> six, eight, ten children. What's your, what's your advice to America? Well, I think the problem is ignorance. And I, I don't mean to offend anyone mm-hmm. listening to the show, but God says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And, you know, I have to tell you something. No synagogue in the United States will allow me to speak. And only certain Christian churches allow me to speak. Those who are into eschatology, they're not afraid. The pastor says, my people, my congregants have to know what's going on. Avi, please come and tell them. I was just now in in North Dakota, and I gave a six-hour seminar. I have a track record. I go to small churches. I go to big churches, primarily small churches. People who want to know what's going on, I regularly reconnoitre the borders. I pick up information. Let me tell you a little story. I was last summer in Vancouver, Canada, and I always go to Abbotsford. Abbotsford is like an hour to the east, and it was during the summer, so even after the church, it was still bright out. It was still the sun. And my Canadian hosts, you know, point to me, see that house over there? That's in the United States. We're right along the border. And uh, then he said, see the house between us and that house? That's on the Canadian side. I said, well, there's no fence. And uh, they said, that's right, there's no fence. I said, wow, if I were a terrorist, I would dig a tunnel. I'd buy the two houses and dig a tunnel. He says, yes, that's exactly what they did. And there are thousands of such tunnels between the Canadian and American borders between farmhouses. I have a lady friend in Maine, and she tells me there's, it's called a river. It's a border with Canada, but it's not a river. It's just like a shallow stream up to your ankles. And when you go across the border walking from Canada to the U.S. or U.S. to Canada, it is your responsibility to look for a border patrol guy and report. Like, yeah, really, like these terrorists are going to go and report. And in addition, you know what's going on with Mexico, and they got these tunnels that trucks can go through. So only God knows how many people have come through and what kind of weaponries they could have brought in. I need a little bit of a short answer here, and we can pick it up on the other side of my break here. But what do you think Israel is going to do? Do you think she will strike militarily? And if she strikes militarily, do you think she'll be successful in taking out these nuclear reactors? Uh, The answer is yes and yes, Mm -hmm. if you want a short answer. Israel has said many times, if we find an existential threat, we'll go it alone. And secondly, don't forget, my favorite president in American history is Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. And Ronald Reagan opposed Israel's attacking Osirak in 1981. Mm -hmm. And and Reagan was really angry with Israel. Israel had to do it. Israel did the United States a big favor. Did the the world a favor. Yes. So, you know, Israel has been there before. You think she has the firepower to, I don't think she can destroy all these reactors. She can do great damage to them, perhaps? Set them back? I believe they definitely set them back, maybe more. I, I, You know what? I'm not into military secrets. I don't mm-hmm. know them. And if I knew the military secrets, I'm not so sure I would reveal them on this show. Sure. I understand. Talking to Avi Lipkin, you can learn more at VicMord.com. He also goes by the name Victor Mordecai, and he's got a number of books. And I'll mention those before we go out of the program. And um, Avi, there's some other things I want to talk about here. And I, I wanted to give another quote or two. I actually gave this to you before the program. 
program. This is a talk show host, Kevin McCullough. He says, somehow in strange series of events only 14 years removed from the attacks of 9-11, we, the people of the United States, have found ourselves falling helplessly through the cracks of history as our current leadership has opened the canyon of buffoonery. And then he says this, the progressive's ignorance of evil and all that it accomplishes is the single greatest danger to America and her future. Then he says, we have no business giving the world's worst terrorists $150 billion. We have no business allowing them to have full nuclear weaponized capacity 16 to 24 months. We have no business leaving our political prisoners to rot in their prisons. We have no business allowing the collectively most racist and prejudiced people on earth to have nuclear weapons. Here's what I found interesting and so true. And he picks up on the progressive ignorance of evil. The progressive feels if we be friends to our enemies, they'll love us. As an Israeli, you would never agree with that, would you? Well, absolutely, because in Islam, there is no way that there will really be peace with Islam. Because any Muslim leader who really makes peace with Israel, temporary truce is okay. Not Mm -hmm. so okay, but it's okay. Uh, But a real peace with Israel, that Muslim leader will be assassinated Mm -hmm. for going against Islam, Mm -hmm. for going against Islam.